What's up guys, Cameron here from Drums and Drams, and today's video marks the beginning of the countdown process for my top five whiskeys of 2023. This is not something that I've ever done on the channel before, so I'm a little bit apprehensive about it. I'm gonna kind of talk to you about my criteria and how I went through it very quickly, but first, just gonna let you know how this is working this week. Basically, starting with today's video, each day is going to focus on one whiskey counting down five, four, three, two, one, which means today's video is my number five whiskey of 2023. And I think this is actually the most challenging video to make because this is the cutoff point where I say, okay, you're in my top five, you know, you are good enough, whatever good means in this case, to be in what I would consider to be my, my five favorite whiskeys of the year. Whereas anything, you know, below this, you don't make the cut. It's not really that big of a, a leap from five to six, but you know, people take these lists and they run with them. To that point, I wanna say, and I hopefully will say this at the beginning of all of these videos this week, if I can remember, that you should not take my top five list that seriously. I'm not trying to automatically absolve myself of these choices, but anybody that makes a list like this, you don't know the process they really went through. You don't really know what they're tasting and what their, their value judgments of these whiskeys are. So you should take everything like this with a grain of salt, taste for yourself, go with what you prefer in a whiskey, not what somebody tells you that, that you should like. And especially, I want to say, don't go overpaying by hundreds of dollars for some of the bottles that I talk about in my top five. That would just break my heart if you got one and it wasn't your thing. I, I would hate to be the, the reason that you did that. With that said now, let's go ahead and talk about my criteria for a top five bottle of the year. These are kind of random. Uh, they're not in any particular order. Number one, I really care about flavor concentration in whiskey. So if there's a high amount of flavor for the amount of ethanol in the in the whiskey. So if it's a high proofer, it better have enough flavor to back it up. I really care about flavor concentration. I care a lot about bottles that I pick up, pour out, and I can't stop pouring that night. Like if, if it's a bottle that I cannot get away from, I cannot put it down, that's a big one for me. That shows me that I love the whiskey, come hell or high water, I wanna drink it. So that's another factor in my judgments on these. The other thing I'm always trying to think about as well is a whiskey's particular style, whether it's a rye, a, a, a blend of straights, whatever the case may be, does it kind of meet that style, uh, you know, criteria, I guess, is it a little bit of a unique uh, take on that style? Essentially trying to put those whiskeys into their their correct context to understand maybe what the company was going for. I don't wanna to do too much inferring there, but for instance, if you have a Bardstown blend where everything's listed on the side label, you kinda of know what's going on in that blend. You can kinda of see what they were going for. And then from you know, from that point, you can kinda of judge if they did a good job, you know, in your opinion, or maybe they didn't kind of live up to what you were hoping that would be. So with that said, let's get on with it. You can see I've got two whiskeys poured out in front of me here. And my number five whiskey with caveats, this one's gonna have, it might be the only video with caveats. My top five whiskey, my number five is going to be this Virtue Spirits Rye Whiskey from the Bourbon Junkies. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh my gosh, you're only doing this because the junkies are your friend. I will take that criticism. I'm prepared for that criticism. But if you recall, I actually made a video uh, a few months back after I picked up this rye one. This is the first single barrel rye that they released. It's a Sagamore rye distilled at MGP. And it is, it is truly a special bottle. I've never really had a rye whiskey like this. It's full of root beer flavors. I've got some poured out here. Big root beer flavors, big kind of maple brown sugar. It's an interesting rye. It kind of defies expectations. But when you taste this, you can tell it's a rye whiskey. There is some mintiness in there. There are some really dark orange citrus notes. None of that bright stuff. I think it's truly a one of one whiskey, but I understand that it is a single barrel. It is a one of one whiskey, quite literally. And I feel a little weird putting something like that in my top five. So I did want to tell you what this went up against, which was Bardstown Discovery 11. This whiskey would technically get my sixth place for the year. And we're not awarding sixth place, but I wanted to let you know that that's where this would sit. In fact, I would just go ahead and call this an honorable mention because I think this is a really really great blend from Bardstown Bourbon Company. It's kind of getting back to those Bardstown one, two, three, four Discovery Series bottles. At the very beginning, when they were starting to release that stuff, 
which had significant, you know, con significantly aged Kentucky whiskeys. This is getting back to that style, and I think they're doing the right thing uh, by going that direction. 118.1 proof. It's a it's a great whiskey, but it's not. To me, it doesn't have that wow factor. It's just really, really good, but it doesn't have the wow factor. Whereas this Virtue Rye Single Barrel Number One has the wow factor because it is so dark, rich, full of those root beer flavors that you get on only very particular funky MGP barrels. Now, with with all of this, you know, kind of out in the open now, I did want to make one recommendation for those of you who are not going to have the chance to ever try this rye one from Virtue Spirits, which, I mean, you're probably not unless your friend got a bottle in the lottery uh, from the Junkies. It's a very short barrel. You can get closer than, you know, I would like to admit to this bottle with a batched product. It's a slightly lower proof. The rye one is coming in at 122. This is the Sagamore eight-year rye, and this particular batch is batch 2A coming in at 111.4 proof. And this is a significant whiskey. It's a little less impactful for me, but actually more diverse in its flavor profile than the Junkies Rye One. And I love the diversity. I love the balance in the blend. Some people might actually pick this over this Virtue Rye One just because it kind of hits a few more bases. But I like a whiskey that knows what it is and turns that up to 11. And that's exactly what Virtue Rye One does. Either way, you can't go wrong with these whiskeys. So Rye One from Virtue Spirits, my number five whiskey of the year. Bardstown Discovery 11, a close, and I mean really close, sixth place. I, ke I kept going back and forth on this. I <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to land. It was, it was a very tough choice. But now let me do a super quick review again of Rye One, and then I'm going to taste Bardstown 11. I'm going to taste this for you very quickly and kind of give you my thoughts. And then we're going to get out of here. And tomorrow you can tune in for the uh, number four whiskey of the year, which is a little bit of an easier choice and way less caveats and way less bottle substitutions than this video. But on the nose, like I said, all that root beer, maple, it's just a crazy profile for a rye whiskey. There's a note in here that's kind of like a brown paper bag. So that's a little bit of a funkier note. But I think that goes, you know, kind of with the territory of having a whiskey that that is this dark. As you can see, it is incredibly dark stuff and a whiskey that is this concentrated in its flavor, which, again, is one of my my big criteria. Here we go on the palate. Yeah, the palate up front, very sweet, rich, concentrated, flat cola, flat root beer, almost like root beer float. Actually, there's some some nice vanillas woven in there, too. And then it explodes on the mid palate. Tons of pepper, tons of cinnamon, and a lot of that dark, dark caramelized orange citrus. And then as we get into the finish now, it's a, it's a really long finish and just some wonderful stuff. But now let's move quickly to the Bardstown Discovery 11. And if there could ever be a more opposite comparison, this, <laughs> this would be it, right? This is the total opposite of this rye. Discovery 11 is fresh cherries. I mean, bright, fresh, lively. It, it smells, it just smells delicious. Underneath that, you get classic Kentucky bourbon uh, notes, stuff like, like peanut butter. And I know there's all these rumors that the, the big component in this blend is wild turkey. I would totally believe it if you told me that the peanut butter notes and the leathery oak funk going on in here is that, that turkey funk that we often talk about from wild turkey. I would believe it because this has... All of these fresh cherry notes, which don't totally go together with the age, the age notes, the funky notes underneath it, but it does make for an interesting kind of uh, layered profile from top to bottom. So now let's check it out on the palate. Yeah, all fresh cherry up front, fresh cherries and like uh, cool whip. You got to say it like that. I mean, come on, but fresh cherries and that cool whip kind of whipped cream note front of the palate as it rolls back that's when you get into some of those darker more caramelized aged Kentucky bourbon notes and on the finish now still fresh fruit still fresh fruit developing on here almost bright enough to call this like fresh strawberries even so very opposite profiles that's what made this decision so hard this is not quite as impactful or concentrated in flavor as the rye one and that's kind of ultimately what this came down to along with just the preference of this kind of darker flavor profile overall but that's going to do it today thank you guys for checking this out if you like the video 
hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think of this choice and not all of these are gonna be such busy videos in the top five. I apologize. Thank you for supporting the channel. Tune in tomorrow for my number four review. And if you wanna see kind of how this process unfolded to come down to these top nine or so bottles, go check out that four hour and 20 minute live stream that I did where I tasted through so many whiskeys. It was this big preliminary tasting. It was extremely unstructured and unorganized, but I came down to these top bottles. Go check that out if you want some more uh, insight into how this all happened. But again, don't take this list so seriously. Don't take anybody's list so seriously. Cheers, and I'll see you guys tomorrow here on Drums and Drams.